Welcome to the FanDuel running back analysis for week four. I'm Jason Gilbo, Jay Gilbo 11. With me is Justin Elick at Big Gilly 42. Taking a look at cash value GPP backs for this week. And um, it seems like a pretty chalky week at running back. Yeah. I mean, it seems, I guess we can kind of, if we're talking chalk first, talk about Melvin Gordon, who last week was obviously the chalk. And, you know, from a yardage standpoint, it looks like he had a pretty terrible game and he really did. Um, 35 rushing yards, but 443 through the air, got that uh, that touchdown. I don't think it was late. What, third quarter, I think it was. But uh, ended up with a solid score, enough that it wouldn't kill you. And, you know, the thing about Melvin Gordon is that he's just has such a stranglehold on that um, that backfield with, you know, obviously Brandon Oliver was out before the season. Now Danny Woodhead is out. And, I mean, he's already seen 14 rushing attempts inside the 20-yard line, which – tied with Forte for the second most in the NFL. So this is a guy that gets all of the carries all of the time. And you just know inside the five-yard line, especially with Antonio Gates banged up or whether he plays or not, I mean, you don't really have a legitimate red zone threat in the passing game. So why not just pound the rock and give Melvin Gordon a ton of chances? Yeah, I definitely agree. And I mean, I think you look at last week, and obviously, I mean, on the ground, it wasn't a great game. But I think through the air and kind of what he put together as a whole – that gave me a little bit more confidence in terms of what he can bring as a floor. Um, because I think before that game coming in, I was a little just kind of skeptical about what he can actually do. Uh, how, how low is that floor? But if that's it and that's his workload, I mean, in this matchup, I, I'm with you. I don't think I can really fade him in cash games. And in GPPs, it's even going to be tough. Yeah. I mean, seven targets in the passing game last week is, is definitely encouraging for a guy that really wasn't involved in the passing game at all last year because of Woodhead and then slowly increasing. He probably won't see seven targets this week, but – I mean, last week in this same matchup, we saw almost 300 yards from Coleman and Devontae Freeman. So obviously there's really no second back to help try to get 297 yards this week. But um, I mean, Gordon, just this is a dream matchup. We thought last week was a great matchup, but this is about as good as it gets. And recency bias is certainly going to keep his ownership really, really high this week. So like you said, I don't I don't really see any way around playing him this week. So what are you saying? You're saying because there's no one else, he's going to get 300 yards and four touchdowns on his own? I mean, isn't that kind of like the default thinking here? <laughs> that Definitely not 300 yards, but I honestly wouldn't be shocked to see 150 plus. I'm not predicting that. But, I mean, total all-purpose yardage, you know, we saw last week he had, what was it, 78 total yards, I think it was. I mean, I don't see any scenario aside from him getting hurt that he doesn't get at least 100 total yards and a touchdown this week. No, I definitely agree. I think he's in play for one of the higher floors on the day uh, and a pretty safe option. Uh, next guy here, you talk about like Garrett Blunt, uh, 7,500 against the Bills. Um, I mean, in terms of, of workload, I mean, this guy's up there with kind of the best of them at this point. Yeah, and it's weird to say we're talking about D'Angelo Williams pretty much every week until he, you know, stabbed everyone in the back, uh, almost like he wanted back the money that he won for everybody the first couple of weeks, so he decided to take it back. He probably faded himself last week on every site. But, uh, yeah, that was pretty rough. But either way, um, like Garrett Blunt now leading the NFL in rushing yards and carries quietly, even though he's a guy that nobody was really on. We didn't really get him on the main slate last week either, so he couldn't play him. But Football Outsiders has the Bills 21st in the league against the run. And, I mean, Blunt 22 for 70 in a touchdown, 29 for 123 in a touchdown, 24 for 105 in two touchdowns. Now we've got – who really knows who's going to be under center? Um, obviously, Brady still going to miss one more game. Garoppolo's banged up. Brissett's banged up. Maybe it's Julian Edelman. Maybe they'll just let Garrett Blunt just play quarterback. I don't know. But it doesn't seem to matter with this team. They just get it done. And, I mean, you know what's coming with these guys, especially when with question marks at quarterback, you know Blunt's getting 20-plus carries. And, I mean, he's probably the toughest running back to bring down in the entire NFL. I mean, almost 250 pounds. If you ask me, he's probably over 250. I think they say 247, but this man is not under 260. No, he's definitely not. I mean, he's a full-grown man. <laughs> he is just <laughs> – he's, he's, He looks like a lineman. <laughs> he's like a slimmed-down Vince Wilfork at running back. Like, that's basically what he is. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, I mean, it's – I wouldn't want to tackle him. I mean, I obviously, I couldn't. I'm not – I'm almost – I'm over 200 pounds myself, but there's no way I got a chance, but – yeah, I mean, I think it's just such an obvious play, and I know his, his price is kind of bumped up, and you hate paying that because, you know, over the past couple of years, it's tough to kind of make sense of that Patriots backfield, but there's no making sense of it right now. It's easy. It's it's LeGarrette Blunt, and 
you don't even consider playing anybody else. It's just – it seems like a really – if you're just going the safe route, and, I mean, he, he's shown upside too, two touchdowns last week. But, I mean, I think that he and Melvin Gordon make a lot of sense as your cash game backs. Yeah, I definitely do too. Uh, and then heading into GPPs, I like this play. I think this is one of the better swerves of week four. Uh, Lamar Miller, 8,200. Um, with kind of David Johnson and, and Le'Veon Bell up there, I think Lamar Miller is going to be pretty much overlooked. Yeah, and I mean, David Johnson's got a pretty tough matchup against a, a tough front seven. Also, really, that doesn't keep me off him. Obviously, he he makes plenty of plays in the passing game as well. Um, but, you know, Lamar Miller matched up against the Titans. The Titans ranked 10th, according to football, outsiders against the run. But Lamar Miller is a guy who's been getting a ton of touches. But, you know, as we were talking about Melvin Gordon, kind of like how he was last year, um, Miller hasn't found the end zone yet. But 28 carries the first week, 25, 21, um, four four catches in the first week, then two, then four. He's getting a ton of touches. And this is just a spot where we've seen Brock Osweiler not be a consistent quarterback. Obviously, he needs the help, and they're relying on Miller. It's been more so the fact that the team just isn't getting close to the end zone for him to be able to get in. But you know, this Titans defense, I, I do think is a pretty good one. It's above average defense, but I think that'll keep people um, kind of off of Lamar Miller. But just by sheer volume itself, I mean, things are going to even themselves out. He's not going to continue to see 25 to 30 touches a week and not score touchdowns. So that 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 big week is definitely coming. And uh, I, I definitely think it could be this week. Yeah, I definitely do too. I mean, you, you talk about him, you know, not really being a guy who needs game flow. I think either way he's going to be worked. I mean, we saw that with the Patriots. I mean, they were down right off the bat and he was still getting a heavy workload. So that's really encouraging. Uh, Carlos Hyde here, you talk about next at 6,800. I think he might be close to one of the higher, you know, owned players of the week just because he's priced down really on both sides. Yeah, I mean, he's cheap, and obviously this is not a good 49ers team. We can just pretend like game one didn't even happen because – this team is not anywhere near as good as they were in that game. But uh, either way, leading the NFL in rushes inside the 20 with 16. Got four touchdowns um, off those carries there. And he's another guy who just sees a nice full workload. I mean, we saw last week the team was down by, what was it, 31, 34 points, I think. And they're still running the ball in the fourth quarter. And, I mean, that was about as garbage time as it gets. Like, that was Jacksonville Jaguars last year type of uh, garbage time production for Hyde. Um, ended up with 21 for 103 and a touchdown. He's really not a factor in the passing game. Um, he's got six total catches, but you're not playing him banking on those statistics there. Um, and he's seen some pretty tough matchups. You know, first week, scored two touchdowns against the Rams. They're a pretty tough front. Carolina, not the defense that it once was, um, but still a pretty tough matchup. And then Seattle last week, like we said, most of his production came in the fourth quarter. So, it's not like he was consistently getting five yards to carry the entire game and what was a blowout. But two games already with two touchdowns. He's under 7K. I mean, I think that he's a guy that – and it's not a bad spot. You know, the Cowboys are a defense that they're, – they're average at best. There's not any – I don't have any reservations about targeting them. So um, Hyde's a guy that I think has a, a safe floor. And um, I, I'm not going to say two touchdown upside every week, but, I mean, two out of three weeks he's done it. And this is probably the easiest matchup he's seen. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I think what's encouraging is the guys he's done it against. Um, and now this is definitely a step down. Dallas just seems to be the most bland defense in the league right now. I mean, they're just so boring. I mean, once, I mean, when you have that offense who's just running it all day and they take like seven minutes off the clock, I mean, that's, you know, it, it says yeah. a lot, but it, it's a boring defense. There really isn't much to kind of go um, and shy away from. Yeah. Uh, in terms I mean, of value. Yeah. Go ahead. Oh, no, I was just going to say they're giving up almost five yards a carry, and uh, it's and they've only seen 56 rushing attempts against them, which means that everyone's kind of throwing the ball. Um, they said um, only one team has seen less rushing attempts against them, the Eagles, this year than the Cowboys. So, you know, in terms of actual yardage, they haven't given up a lot on the ground. But, I mean, only 56 total rushing attempts in three games. Um, you got to imagine that Hyde's going to average more than 20 easily. Yeah, it's not really an efficiency thing, or yeah. uh, it's not really a volume thing. It's an efficiency thing with them. So, uh, in terms of value, you look at Jordan Howard, fifty six hundred, going up against the Lions defense. That uh, another one that's given up just a ton of yards per carry. Yeah, I mean five point one yards per attempt for them. And uh, Jordan Howard's a guy that was already starting to get a little bit more of a workload last week, and then obviously Jeremy Langford now out for 
I never, I never like these timetables because I say things like two to four and four to six weeks and all these. But then when you get to that point, then it's like maybe he's questionable. Maybe he'll be back like Jamal Charles, that whole situation. So just for now, we'll say he's going to be the only guy in that backfield. And, you know, for $5,600 against the Lions, that team total of 21.75 is, you know, I guess pretty fair considering this is not a good offense at all. But, I mean, we remember the days of Matt Forte being really the only back um, in this Bears offense, getting a ton of looks in the passing game, a good amount of volume as well. And obviously, Jordan Howard isn't quite Matt Forte. Maybe he won't ever be. But, you know, this is a guy that was tremendous in college. And I saw a stat that said uh, he's, he had at least 145 yards in every single game he played with UAB and Indiana in college. And obviously, college football, not the NFL. But, I mean, this is a guy that's been consistently good, you know, at a high level there. So this is really his first shot to be the number one guy. And this is a Lions defense that football outsiders ranks 27th. You got Brian Hoyer probably under center. Who knows what the Jay Cutler situation is. But this this is a passing attack that threw a lot last week, but not necessarily particularly efficiently. So I think that if you're going to go down cheap, he's, he's definitely the guy you got to lock in. Yeah, I think so too. And it's funny looking at the Bears. It just seems like the outside of of Alshon Jeffrey, I mean, everyone's value for them. It, you know, you've seen the Zach Miller talk about. You've seen Howard here, uh, Kevin yeah. White, uh, Hoyer. So it's just like, which one do you want to get a piece of? And and I kind of like Howard just because, you know, people are expecting really Kevin White, Brian Hoyer to do a lot of the damage. But I think people are kind of overlooking Howard maybe just a little bit. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. And I think that he's. Uh... I'm going to see how the rest of my lineups um, kind of shake out, but I, I think he's a guy that makes a lot of sense in, in any format, really. Yeah, definitely. Uh, next one here you talk about Isaiah Crowell for Cleveland, uh, 6,600. Um, you want to talk about low ownership, though. I think this guy's going to be one. Um, and, and even talk about Duke Johnson here if, if he's unable to go because he was limited yesterday. Yeah, I mean, Crowell is, you know, I, I'm looking today at his, his status. Obviously, it's um, early in the day, but – he participated fully in yesterday's practice. The day before, he was limited, so looks like he's definitely a go. Um, when I wrote that a couple of days ago, it was it was a questionable scenario. And I think Duke Johnson, the guy you can play in GPPs anyway. But you know, this is a Redskins defense that is really, really bad. Um, they've given up at least twenty seven points in every single game, and they've given up four point six yards per attempt, seven touchdowns already on the ground. And Crowell, obviously not a huge volume guy. We've seen Duke Johnson get a decent amount of carries as well, um, although he's generally more of the pass-catching third down back. Um, but Crowell's averaging over six yards a carry this year, and he's not going to maintain that. But if there's ever a spot for him to continue numbers like that, it's this one against the Redskins. And we know Josh Gordon, obviously not going to be back for this game, maybe not back ever now with this whole rehab thing. So you once again have Terrell Pryor and no one else on this offense and Crowell's a playmaker, so there are not very many of those on the Browns' side. And I definitely want a piece of uh, this offense, as sick as it makes me feel to say that, because this Redskins defense is just – it's one of the worst in the NFL, definitely. Which was kind of a shocker coming in. I mean, they turned it on last year. I mean, it was there was a point where it was about six or seven weeks where we didn't really target running backs against Washington at all. Yeah. Um, and now this year, it just seems completely different. It's a little odd, but I, I like it. I think the Browns are an intriguing GPP team. Uh, and as you mentioned, Terrell Pryor as well, who I know we'll talk about later in, in our pods. Um, but yeah, I mean, any reason um, why you kind of listed these guys? I mean, you know, you, you got guys like David Johnson, Le'Veon Bell up top. Is it more of just a matchup and price thing? I mean, it's it's matchup and it's price. I mean, you can get – you see Melvin Gordon is, what, the seventh most expensive guy on FanDuel. He's kind of a chalky play. I don't see a way around playing him. Blunt's the ninth most expensive. But, you know, the guys above that, I'm not playing Todd Gurley against Arizona. Lamar Miller, I mentioned, you know, as a GPP guy. I don't really like the matchup for David Johnson, so he's purely a GPP play. But, I mean, it's kind of an obvious GPP play. I don't really need to tell everyone that. And I think that Le'Veon Bell certainly going to be popular – we know the kind of massive upside he has, but you know I'm not making any bold predictions by saying play the best running back in the league, really in any matchup because love him or hate him. I mean, I think Bell's easily the best running back in the league, so he's obviously a perfectly fine option. And Mike Tomlin even said he's going to see a huge workload this week because I mean D'Angelo Williams got to be dead tired by now anyway. The kind of volume they gave him, so I think Bell's still going to have a monster week. So if you don't want to play. Some of these other guys lock him in with Gordon, and I think that's perfectly fine too. 
You, you look at those Steelers guys, it's like Antonio Brown, Le'Veon Bell. It's like talking about guys in cores. Yeah, exactly. It's just, it's so. John Carlos Stanton against the lefty in cores. Yeah. Let, let me just tell you in case you just didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're the top volume guys, top threats in the league. It's, yeah, pretty easy calls there. Yeah. So that's going to wrap things up with the FanDuel running back analysis. Be sure to check out DaveFantasyCafe.com for all great tools and content.